How do you feel about cancer screenings? There's a lot of different methods out there, mammography, needle biopsy, and we could go on and on. Yeah. If somebody has well, signs and symptoms and they feel like they might have cancer or their doctor's screening them, what I'm getting at here is, is there a continuum from you know, good, better, best when it comes to assessing? And I've heard of things like thermal imaging that are less invasive or supposedly. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about all that? Well, I think the, the, um, any kind of imaging that does not, is non-invasive. Uh, could be potentially helpful. So um, a non-invasive imaging, like you said, thermal imaging, they're, they're trying to work on, 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 on blood biopsy, liquid, liquid biopsy, which I think uh, the, the president's uh, moonshot project, I hate to call it that, it's, but he has a, a, a component in there for building, uh, looking more into liquid biopsies <clears throat> where, where you can take in the blood and look and see if you have certain cancer markers uh, that might predict uh, whether or not uh, you should have a certain type of treatment. But there's still a lot of false positives and false negatives associated with that. I, I think MRI, PET scan, anything that you can use to get an assessment. My, my colleagues that, are, that work in the area, the radiologists, uh, these kinds of guys, they're pretty sure when they look at a, a, an image, not 100% sure, but maybe a pretty high percentage sure, to know whether that mass that you're looking at is malignant or not. Okay. Now the field de de determines that in order to make that decision, you need to take a biopsy of, of, of the tissue, look at it under the microscope, and then confirm what the um, a radiologist has already uh, predicted. That uh, that yeah, that's malignant because I can look at the edges. I can I can look at the image the way it looks and angles, and and they can pretty much determine whether this is bad or good. Um, or how bad it could be, but the the ultimate determination comes comes from the biopsy material, where a pathologist looks at the the number and structure of the cells. My concern with that is that I have read many, 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 many papers where the very uh, process of taking sample from the tissue could provoke the microenvironment, uh, leading to a tumor cell dissemination from the very procedure to, to look at the tissue to determine whether or not it's malignant. Now, if it's not, if it's a benign tumor, then you would never really need to, to take a biopsy from it. Um, if you could assess that it would be benign, you can just cut it out and debulk it without really doing much else. But if it is malignant, the last thing you would want to do is take a biopsy of that tissue, leading to the process of now spreading it through your body. And people say, well, it's very rare. I agree. I didn't say it's very rare. It's not common. Uh, biopsy of patients' tumors to cause it to be uh, a terminal malignant cancer is, in fact, not common. However, there's enough papers in the literature to say that it can happen in multiple different cancers, not only brain cancer, colon cancer, breast cancer, uh, all these different kinds of cancers that I've seen um, where they can stay actually uh, spread the tumor cells around from biopsy. Yes, it doesn't happen. It's not a common thing. But what what about the poor patient that dies from that it, needlessly? Okay, for that person, it's lights out. That didn't need to happen. You know, they used to have the morselation procedure for uterine polyps in women. Okay, they pulled that off the market. Why? Because it's like a kind of a a lawnmower it grinds up the polyps uh, in the uterus. And people were getting metastatic cancer and dying from the grinding up of the polyps. Because if one of those polyps happened to be a malignant polyp, you're spreading the malignant cells all over the place. So they had to stop this morselation procedure. That was exactly what I'm talking about. So you've got to be very careful. You don't want to stick the hive when the bees are all in and have the bees come out. You got to you got to get rid of it before they they can come out. That's why I said if you see something, go on metabolic therapy, see if it disappears, and if it doesn't disappear and it becomes smaller, debulk it, get rid of it. <clears throat> you know, don't don't go and chop around on it. This kind of stuff. That's what I was getting at. I'm glad you're able to decipher. There's a continuum from bad to good when it comes to screening, mm -hmm. which yeah. isn't even into the therapy. All the stuff we talked about before, which is another whole area that people right, have to. Right decipher through and figure out their own path. You're absolutely right. So everything has to be done strategically, causing the least amount of stress and harm to the patient under any conditions. And again, each patient is different from another patient. And the sharp people who understand screening 
can make those decisions. If they're trained to know how to make these decisions and then be very careful about their recommendations, I think a lot of people will benefit from this, or at least you won't let some people die needlessly from, from a lack of knowledge. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. What I'm talking to you about, almost nobody in the field knows anything that I'm saying here. And how do I know that? Because they're not using these techniques in their, in their clinics. If they, if they understood what I'm saying, they would be transitioning over to this immediately.